So the eyes, I'm not going to have a texture on this guy. I'm just going to have a white material that came with him or this gray material. And I'll tweak the cutout opacity on the surfaces tab a little bit. So on the geometry cutout opacity, I'm going to make that a little bit dimmed down like 0.8 or something that makes him a little bit transparent and that just makes gives him that ghostly appearance. But mostly I'm going to add eyes to him and I'm not going to do that with a texture. I'm going to do this with an iRay decal node and that is something quite fancy actually. It's a projection that game engines often use. If you shoot at something like a wall and you see bullet points impacting that wall, then the geometry of that wall or the texture of that wall isn't actually changed but a decal is projected onto it temporarily. Footsteps is another a good way of that. If you're walking in the desert, there's no real geometry that gets deformed. Usually there's just a bunch of footprints that are being drawn onto the ground. And then when you look back, then you see that over the, the course of 10 seconds or so, they kind of fade out again as if there were never any footprints. And this is classic use of decals. And IRA has this principle as well. So all we need for that is an image that we can project on it. Let me go and grab one. I'll use, you can use for, you can search for cartoon eyes and get an image. You can draw them yourself. I'm going to use Canva quickly. They have nice cartoony little elements. I don't know if you're familiar with Canva. It's, uh, it's a project by Guy Kawasaki. And look at that. They have, if you look for something like eyes, then, you know, you'll find a lot of eyes. Let's do that. Let's go and put these guys in. This is, these are going to be our eyes. I'm going to hold alt shift click to make them a bit bigger. I'll go and download this with transparent background and carry on uh, working in Photoshop with that. So the most important thing is that you have a transparent background. The way iRay applies transparency is that it ignores the transparency that's inside a PNG, for example, and it needs a dedicated map for that. So I guess it would prefer JPEG images. So let me make uh, two parts of this. Let me go and add a white background to this first of all and move the background underneath it and then I'll put this into its own group just so that we're that we're getting organized here and uh, that is my that is the, the first part of the puzzle so this is basically the the base map that I'll use for my eyes let me go and save that out once again into my Halloween folder I'm going to go and make a new folder in this and I'm going to call that textures as your projects grow, it's really helpful to have this kind of folder structure there. I'll call it eyes base, and I'm just going to export this as a JPEG. So now I'll go and duplicate my folder here and make the transparency map from this. And the transparency map means it needs to have whatever the picture is white and whatever is supposed to be transparent needs to be black. So let's make a black background then. Instead, let me go add some blending options and just have a color overlay over the eyes and make that white. That's as simple as that. So this was the original white background with material. And now the transparency map is the other way around. It's going to be a black is transparent and white is whatever material should shine through. And I'll go and save that out as eyes trans. While we're keeping everything organized, let me go and save this Photoshop document as well. I'll just keep it in the Texas folder. All right, let's put eyes on the little guy. Two parts of the process. First, we need to create an iRay decal node for that. That's at the top here, create iRay decal node. And depends if you've got an object selected already, it offers to parent this to the object, which is a good idea. If you don't have an object selected, this option is grayed out. But I want my decal to move with my goals. So that's kind of important. And as soon as it's here, it has uh, it has a couple of properties there. So I'm, first of all, I'm going to move it slightly. This is just the node here for the decal. I'll go and move this slightly away and then also move it up because this is where we'd like the eyes to project. This may or may not work, and it's only visible in iRay. We'll see, what's, we'll see what happens. So with the decal node selected, I need to set up my material. So that's on the Surfaces tab. We have the same properties as we have on, on regular surfaces, but we only have a front and a reverse. I'm hoping front is going to be enough. Under Base, let me go in the Base channel. Let me go and apply my eyes here. There we go. Cartoony, hilarious eyes. 
And then also on the front, under geometry, I'll apply a cutout on the cutout opacity slider. And that's this one here, eyes trans. And if everything worked well, that should now project some eyes on the guy, but we're not seeing anything because it's only visible in iRay. There we go. What do you say, eyes on the ghost? Let me go save this. I'm going to go and put this in my characters folder and I will actually save this as a scene subset because I don't need all the bits and pieces that come with the little ghost. I'll just call this ghost version one. Subset means I can deselect things I don't necessarily need to have in there, like the filament draw options, tone mapper options and all that. All I want is my ghost and the IRA decal node. So I'll, I'll just save that so that it's a set. And then it also means it's a character that I can drag into my scene. The little guy is not quite finished yet. So first of all, I think the eye placement could do with a bit of, you know, I think they're a little bit big. So let me make that a bit smaller. And that's just done by shrinking down the decal and moving these up slightly further over here, maybe just a little bit smaller. There also, I can see that some of the eyes are cut off and that is because it has kind of, it's projecting a plane. It's kind of a cube, so it has a little bit of a give there where it needs to be in order for the full object to be visible. So let me see if I can move this back a little bit. Uh, that makes less of the eyes visible. So let me go and push it in a bit, push the eye, the decal closer to the object. And we're almost there. There, I think now we're seeing pretty much all of it. I can also try and make it, make it a bit deeper that may help. I think it's still a bit too uh, too big, <laughs> even though it does look quite nice, doesn't it, with <laughs> with the big cartoony eyes. I mean, you can also you can stretch it so it just behaves like an object. If you want the eyes to be a bit wider, you can make that happen. Or you can push them closer together if you want it to be a bit mean looking. It's all kinds of things you might want to do. So I'm, I think maybe just make them a little bit wider, like so. There, eyes on a ghost. And the cool thing is now that now that the decal is on the ghost, you can go and take the whole ghost and move him around and the decal is going to stay in place. So the eyes, no matter if you if you turn him around or if you rotate him, the eyes are always going to look uh, towards the front. So it's like your own special ghost character here. I think there's only one other thing I might want to do. Let's try tweaking the material on him and make him a little bit translucent. I might also go and switch him into high resolution. It might work best here. There we go. So um, ghost under geometry. Let's reduce your cutout opacity by something like maybe point, point 0.7, 2.7, something like that. So that makes him a little bit see-through. And we'll see this better in the actual scene, but he doesn't look quite as, you know, white and plastic anymore. This is with regular cutout opacity, and this is with him blending in a little bit more. So you can make him as translucent as you want. The more you do that, the more he fades. Kind of like the idea that we don't put this on the eyes. So make it whatever is, uh, is good for you. See, maybe 0.6. I'll try 0.6. But so that he is also appearing as if he's more ghostly, I'll, I'll add some emission here to it. So once again, ghost, surfaces tab, emission channel, change that from black here to any kind of color you want. White will enable it. Anything other than black will enable it. And the default might not be bright enough, but if you want to increase that, like make that five times brighter then you have this ghost that is emitting a little bit of light maybe not too much 5000 should do if you're staying in candles per square meter you can also change this to something else that you're more familiar with like watts for example and then just leave luminance as it is and tweak watts i might try that and we'll see what that looks like in our in our master scene let's go back to filament and save out my ghosts so this, once again, this is going to be my, my Ghost V2. I'll save him as a scene subset. And I'll switch off everything. I just have the Ghost here. And this is now the object that I can drag into my master scene, literally as if it was a brand new character. Anything that I've made for him, with him, about him, will be attached and be still working. It's kind of a nice way to break your scene up into little blocks.